Good morning. What day is it? You're right. Friday. Yes, what are you going to do? Guten Morgen, mein Herr und mein Damen. I am Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. It's 8.43. I don't know what I'm doing today. I know right now I'm on my way to... Well, I've got this great big phonograph horn behind me to take to the FedEx. I'll tell you about that in a minute because I told you I was going to refinish it, but I changed my mind. Anyway, I'll tell you now. Um, I decided to go ahead and sell it, which I did. And let's see, I paid $65 for it and it sold for $850. Okay, so you keep your eyes out for those wooden Victor Victrola phonograph horns. I'll put a picture up here so you know what I'm talking about in case you didn't see me buy it last summer. But, you know, on the way is a thrift shop and they open at 9 o'clock, so let's go there first. Maybe there's another Victor horn waiting. Who knows? Well, we're going to start off the morning with a heartbreak. Actually, it's not that bad, but I'm going to leave this on the shelf because unfortunately, this pretty little opalescent dish, which is going to date to right around 1920 or before. It's got some chips on the edge, uh, which are pretty rough. So I'm going to have to put it back. Now, I'm not sure who the maker is. Jefferson Glass, Fenton, Dugan. I'm not really sure, but oh, any number of companies could have made it. Uh, just during the time that Carnival Glass was popular. And I apologize for all that noise there, cleaning off some of the shelves. And you can also see that the price tag has disappeared on this. So, uh, with these chips on the edge, I'm going to have to say no. Yeah, I'm going to not. I'm going to not take that with me. Okay, let's get away from this lady banging these dishes. Next is a nice console bowl, pink etched. A little unusual. I haven't seen one. Uh, in this particular shape and it's got these lines on there I'm wondering if this matches that mustard set um, not mustard set uh, that mayo set that I bought a while ago well it's a nice big size and there's no damage on it it's right up my alley ooh but at $14.99 we're gonna reverse and get the heck out of this alley I can't do much with it if I have to pay $15 for it I mean, come on, I'd give them about five bucks, but mm, keep shopping. You could stop at five or six stores, or just one. All right, headed down the clear glass aisle, uh, which you really, as you know, you got to spy. You really got to focus in. And let me see. Um, well, there's a mixture. There's some of our old old friend Cape Cod down in there, some hiding. And, oh, this is good grief. You know what? I've got about 50 pieces of this in storage. That's the uh, Federal Normandy pattern, which uh, came out <clears throat> in the... In the 1920s into the 30s and it's one of the few iridescent well slash slash or quote quote carnival uh, depression glass patterns made by uh, federal I think it's federal but the pattern is Normandy and they've got it packaged up with some amber oh is that Madrid I don't remember but let's see six dollars okay well, I don't need it, so I'm going to leave those there. Um, just going to leave those there. There's a lot of that glass floating around. I suppose some folks are still collecting it. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. $4.99. This looks like some different sizes of... Is it the Georgian? Oh, come on, turn around. I can... Oops, that's coming out of there. I think that's the... I, I won't break that open. I think it's the Georgian pattern and different. That's another one of those patterns that was popular and several glass companies made it. 
you know, four or five or six of them all had a Georgian pattern. Uh, I see some more depression glass right through there. What is this? Five dollars for those two little things. Meh. C9 replacement bulbs. I do not need any C9s. Those are the big boys that go outside. Oh, there's tinsel. No, if this was the lead tinsel, I'd get it. Mm-hmm, I surely would. Oh, my goodness. Coat hangers. No thank you. Why do they always seem to multiply? You put them in the closet. You put two of them in the closet. You come back a week later, and there are eight of them. Oh my. Ew, half used makeup. Oh no, no, no. Ladies, do you do that? Would you buy that? Half used makeup? Think your teeth. Think your teeth. What? What is this? It's a toothbrush and something. No. No. No, anything I put in my mouth or on my face, it's going to be brand new. I don't know, that's just me. But I guess if it's nail polish, is that what that is? How about it, ladies and gentlemen? I don't want to discriminate. For those of you who wear nail, nail polish, would you buy used, thrift shop, half opened, half used <laughs> nail polish? <laughs> I, I don't think I would. It's like used underwear. No, 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 I don't. I think I can, let's just skip this, change the conversation. Telephone wire, that's old fashioned, you remember that? When we had one telephone in the kitchen on the wall with that long cord so your mother could chase you down the hallway when you were misbehaving and still, you know, be gossiping on the telephone with her sister-in-law. Remember how long those cords were? All right, now I'm just running my mouth. Oops, my cart is empty. Well, how am I doing so far? Meh. But listen, thrifters, when you head out in the morning, it's a beautiful day. You've got cash burning a hole in your pants, in your pocket, in your wallet, your pocketbook. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> And you go to your first store, and then your second store, and your third store, and you're just not finding anything. Stand fast. Don't open up that wallet. It is not a personal character flaw or a failure. If you leave the house with $100, and you return at home with $95 in cash. Well, I mean, you know, you stopped for lunch, so there's five bucks, right? More like ten, I suppose. But that's just the way it is. Now, I found a few things, but nothing that's really going to burn the house down. Um, so that's just my personal thought on that. Uh, remember, in this business, you make your money when you spend your money. So spend your money wisely. And, you know, I don't like to come home with nothing. I mean, I'm in the business, right? But it happens. So that's okay. Now, what did I find in the two thrift shops? Well, not a whole lot, but let's take a look first at this little guy right here, which was 99 cents. His price tag fell off. There's no cork on the bottom, and it is completely unmarked. And it's a muffineer, and it had silver plate, not silver plate, but um, a silver metallic finish on the top, which is gone. And when you see these things that look like salt and pepper shakers that have been working out great big thing way too big for salt and pepper but it's got all these holes on the top it's probably uh, a muffineer which uh, it's a great name isn't it a muffineer to be used on your breakfast table for your powdered sugar on waffles and muffins and so forth so this one has a nice, a nice delft pattern to it I'm not sure if muffineers were uh, reproduced uh, I, I'm not upset that there's no mark on the bottom of it but I really don't know except that I like it I like the style of it it's in really good condition and I'm hoping it is an old one as I said I just I just don't know if they ever reproduced them or not I don't think they still make muffin ears 
And then I paid, oh, what did I pay? I paid $4.90, $3.99 for, you know how I love my little jam pots, mustard pots, especially when it's the pot, the lid, and the matching ladle or spoon. And this is a nice Noritake piece. Noritake always marked on the bottom. That green stamp there is going to put this 1920 to 1935, something like that. And uh, it's a popular design there that I've seen this before with that sort of stylized fruit basket thing. Uh, again, for the breakfast table. So we're sticking with a breakfast theme here, although these don't match. And then the only other thing I have uh, so far to show for myself after, well, I've only been to two stores, is a uh, lampshade, a tam -shanter. And of course, that's after the Scottish cap. I know it's not just the Scots that wear it. Um, and so this is for a student lamp or uh, a desk lamp, that kind of thing. Um, and that's going to be a nice big, um, is that a 10 inch? A nine inch fitter right there. Okay. Encased glass, which is two layers of glass. It's white on the inside and a mustardy color on the outside. Tam O'Shanter. Oh, wasn't he from a, who was the Scottish poet? Robert Burns. I think it's from a Robert Burns poem, which I probably had to read in freshman high school English class and probably haven't read it since. Boy, am I illiterate. <laughs> okay, that's it. Let's see if we can find something else at another thrift shop. Thanks for watching. Look at this chair. Ah, it's absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it is pink. You know, sometimes we think pink didn't really come on the scene until the 1950s, but no, 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 no. There was pink. There were pink bathrooms, and um, just pink draperies, and obviously pink upholstery, pinkish, really salmon, I guess, <clears throat> uh, in the 1930s. So it's a toned down pink, but that's a. Can you see that? And this kind of upholstery is indestructible and it's clean too. And it says it is $60 for that chair. I looked the whole thing over and there's no rips or tears in the upholstery anywhere. Now this one over here, eh, and these 1990s things, oh my goodness. And look here. Fine Upholstery by Sozy's Upholstery Shop on Kings Highway in Mount Ephraim, New Jersey. That's not too far from here. Look at the telephone number. <clears throat> I wonder if we could call them up. Wow. Well, you know, I don't need it, but I'd love to have it. gosh what a day that's all I can say no I tell a lie that's not all I can say but count your blessings me I'm talking about me count my blessings okay so forget your day because somebody had you know somebody's day was probably undoubtedly worse than mine I had some frustrations today a whole lot of things didn't go well but I have a roof over my head, I have a pork chop in the oven, <laughs> and I've almost mastered the B section of the gladiolus rag. Thank you for watching me struggle through that rag. Okay, I'm back at home. I got a few things to show you, and then I got stuff to do because it's Friday, and it's the Friday before Thanksgiving, <laughs> Christmas Eve. Is it next Friday, Christmas Eve? Let me tell you something. I am, let me just show you what else I have. Oh, I went out of, uh, okay, is that good? Um, I see the dish towel on the back of my chair. Good housekeeping isn't coming over. Um, 
look right here. That's my mantle. Remember my, remember my swag? We worked on that. Well, on top of the old family mantle clock, what do you see up there? It's not a Christmas tree. It's another, it's a cone, cone of uh, sugared fruit and it matches the swag. I'll show it to you in a minute. Calm down. Remember, caffeine does nothing to me. I'm like this all the time. This is a plate and it is called avocado. They look nothing like avocados to me, but I don't eat avocados. It's also called pear, but I think when it was made by the, is it Indiana Glass Company? They called it avocado. A lot of people pass this by. Um, it will glow under a black light. I know it looks like something from the 70s, but can you just catch hints of uranium in there? Oh yeah. These are the two, they almost look like eggplants. Yeah, and there are no chips on that. And this is old, <clears throat> uh, meaning that this is a pattern that came out, if I remember correctly, in the 1920s. Here is a mint green, minty looking green, probably a 1960s looking uh, planter. Nothing on the bottom of it. What did I pay for you? Eh, four dollars. But, you know, I do like the color, but it's definitely, you know, a mid-century form. There's no damage on that. Now, let's talk about reproduction jadeite. There's a gnat in here. How did that gnat get in? I'll tell you, if the old supervisor were still here, that gnat wouldn't have made it through the screens. All right? What do you think? Nobody made this in the 1930s. This is cheap soda lime glass. Um, actually, it's pretty well made. I'm, you know, I'm, it doesn't have rough edges. It doesn't, doesn't feel greasy. <coughs> Excuse me. But it is not antique. It is new. You know, made in the last however many years. I bought it anyway because people do buy reproduction jadeite. I will sell it as a reproduction. Know your jadeite. Almost every antique mall I go into, people are passing off brand new jadeite, and they know better, some of these dealers. But this is a new piece. It says milk on it. It's cute, though. I mean, you know, you can add this to your, to your antique pieces of jadeite, but just know that you're getting a new piece. Don't put anything hot in there. It'll crack. These are Kitsch with a capital K. And I love me some Kitsch. Classic 19, sort of 50s, late 50s, early 60s. Look at these. They say Florida. They're bookends. That is called Kitsch. They're made in Japan and they have that little square. Well, it's not a square, it's a rectangle made in Japan uh, label. That's gonna put them in that after the war. So, you know, we're in the late 50s into the early 60s on these. There is no damage on them. There, there is no damage on them. Yeah, is that subject verb agreement? There is no damage on them. There are no damage on them. There is no damage on them. All right, and it's just, look, if you have a 1950s interior, this is yours. If you like sort of like tacky tourist attraction souvenirs, I love them. There are no brakes. They're really cool on the back as well. I just, it was too kitsch, kitsch to say no. Then some 78 RPMs. I have been collecting 78 RPM records since I was 16 years old, yes, the long story, I'm not going to go into it, but it's one of the first things I started collecting as a young teenager, and I still pick up old 78s 
whenever I can. For the benefit of the folks who may not be into records, 78 RPM, they spin at 78 revolutions per minute. They're made of shellac. They were made from the 1890s into, they were still making some shellac records in the 50s. But the vinyl 45s and the LPs really put the old 78 out of business. So let's see what we've got. I only have a few of them here, and I'm not going to play any, play them for you right now. Uh, Fiddle and Duck. Well, you don't want to hear all this, but anyway. Uh, put My Little Shoes Away. And in the, shade, in the Shadows of the Pine. Now, Conqueror, that was the Sears and Roebuck label. So you would order Conqueror records through the Sears catalog. And so, um, some of the offerings weren't necessarily cutting edge because, you know, a lot of times Sears and Roebuck catalog folk were country people, people who lived in small towns and farms and, you know, little communities, not necessarily city folk. And uh, so a lot of the tunes were catered to that audience. This is Golden Slippers. And will the circle be unbroken on the Bluebird? That's the that was a uh, a cheaper Victor uh, label, but I bought it because it is being sung by Vernon Dalhart and Carson Robbins Robison, Carson Robison. Okay, so let's not even get into that. But Vernon Dalhart has a Texas connection, and I'll play some of these for you some other time. Uh, when I Take My Vacation in Heaven by the Wright Family. Are you still watching? Uh, let the lower lights be burning. Can you see that? Now that, that's an old hymn. You old church people know that. I don't know if John Wesley wrote it, but I grew up singing all the Methodist hymns. We sang it. Did you Baptists and Episcopalians sing let the lower lights be burning. Let's see. Hold on, I got music playing back there. It's already eight minutes. Um, let the lower lights be burning. Brightly beams our Father's mercy from his lighthouse evermore. But to us he gives the keeping of the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across the waves. Some poor, fainting, struggling seamen you may rescue, you may save. Yes! Well, listen, when you've been singing it almost every other Sunday since birth, they're up here. I even know part of the second verse. Uh, mm, sorry, you've heard enough. Anyway, who else knows uh, Let the Lower Lights Be Burning? And then finally, I didn't sing it, I sort of just... I could sing it, but the whistling, no, we're not going to, I'm not. See, the reason why I stopped is some of the titles were very culturally insensitive. It's, it's history, it's horrible, uh, and, you know, it's part of our history, but I'm not going to repeat it because it's... Okay, the King of Rags on this side, and that's um, Arthur Pryor's orchestra or band. He was a great trombone player. And then we have a um, big hit in the early 20s, Yes, We Have No Bananas, by Sam Lennon and his dance orchestra. And then we have a foxtrot tune called Pickles by the original Memphis Five. So I'm going to crank up the old Victrola and have a roll back the carpet and see what happens. Um, that's it. Okay. Thanks for watching. Oh, I forgot to show. I forgot to show you my mantle. I'll come back and show you that later. Okay, I've got stuff I've got to do. It's Friday night, and I hope whatever you're doing, you're having a nice time. And be safe, as always. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, saying thanks for watching, wait for the cat, and so long for now.